We're going to dig a little bit deeper into the drum machines in this lesson, but to be 100% honest with you, these drum machines are so easy to use and they're pretty much self-explanatory. So we won't be spending too much time on them and all of their sonic possibilities. I'll leave that up to you to explore. But I think where you can get tripped up again is with a lot of this routing. So at the moment, we have our master output going into this crossfader. And what that means is we're hearing all of these drum sounds, okay? So if I just play this. pull it down a little bit we're getting all of our drum sounds like so well what happens if I want to split out the kick drum and I want to process that independently because right now if I was to add an effect here it's going to affect everything not just the kick drum so if we wanted to add a delay for example we might find ourselves in a little bit of trouble because when we add this delay in here going out of the master we're gonna be delaying the kick drum and that can get a little bit cloudy and get a little bit messy with low frequencies. You can hear that. You can hear what's happening when the kick drum is delaying and then it's triggering again. It's giving you this weird wobbly sort of sound and with your low end just from, you know, we're not going into all the technical stuff, but from a low end perspective, you don't really want that. You want something very clear, something very solid down there whenever you can get it. So what I really have to do is figure out a way to um, get my kick drum going out independently. Now, if I plug this back in and I then just say, okay, why don't I run my kick drum through like a distortion? I'm gonna run to some problems because I have an output here and I need to run that somewhere because now the master is taking everything except for the kick drum since we've pulled that out independently. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Well, there's a lot of options we can do and it comes back to mostly things that we've talked about before and uh, that's just choosing the right sort of mixing container that we wanna use. So we'll go in here and I think in this case, I'll go ahead and choose um, the mini mixer because maybe we want to have four different inputs all mixed together before going into the crossfader. So I think that's what I'm going to choose here. Okay, so now I'm going to unplug this input here. I'll run this into one of our channels here and then I'll run the kick drum into a separate one into number two and then we'll go out of the mini mixer and pretty much the output on most things usually is all the way to the right. Uh, of course, with this drum machine, it's all the way to the left, but just zoom in, you'll be able to see that. I'll plug it in and now we're getting both. So that kick drum is pretty powerful. So we'll pull this back, we'll pull back on the drive. All right, so let's look at these drum machines. They're very simple to figure out. It won't take you more than maybe five minutes to really get a good sense of how this is working. Uh, in this one, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the preset in as is, but I can go and I can do some actual shaping to the sound. So for example, with the bass drum, maybe I don't want it to be as ringing out as long as it is right now. I can just take the decay, pull that back and start to bring it in where I want it. So I kind of like that. With the accent, what we're really kind of doing here, it's hard to explain, but really there's like some ghost notes and there are some um, hits that are occurring off of the main beat. And when you have accent all the way up, it really highlights those. If I pull it back, you're gonna hear how that kind of goes away. If I bring it in. So that one I'd say just kind of set to taste, especially if you're working with presets, you'll be able to find a nice range there that you want. To adjust patterns, we actually do have to go in and choose the sound that we want. So for example, if I click on something like the snare drum here, you can see that we have the nine is on, the 11 is on, maybe I wanna just like, so you can really hear this, I'll just click all of these. Now this is a 64 length pattern. So once it goes around once, it's gonna take a while to get back around. Now we can wait for it, it's going around, going around. Should come back in a second, here it comes. 
So that's the way you really do that. You can go through and choose your different sounds. You have the option of like, in some cases, picking between two sounds. You don't even have to be selected to do this. So maybe I don't want the low tom. Let's see, is there actually using any of this? Doesn't look like it's using any of that. Doesn't look like it's using any of that. It might be using rim shots, especially towards the end of the pattern. Hmm. Perhaps not. So this may not even really be relevant to what we're doing here. In this case, it's not going to matter, but I guess what I could do is I could go in here and I'll just give you an example here of how this is working. So uh, right now I'm chosen to hand claps and this time we do have something it's selected on the nine. So just listen. So you can hear that there. And if I change this to maracas and let's just actually add a bunch in here. Why not? And you know, I kind of like that sound. Why not leave that in? Too many. Like so. So really, I would just say go through, kind of experiment with that. There's nothing too complicated that's going on here. One thing you can do is you can actually speed up the sound of this pattern, the pattern as a whole, by going to this uh, pre-scale here. So just listen to what happens. So just play around with that. We're not actually going to talk about exactly what all of these notes mean, but you can just get a sense for the feel of it. And I think that's really all you need to know. So that's what we'll look at here with this 808 style emulation. Only other thing worth mentioning is the shuffle on or off. We'll just listen to it once through with the shuffle off and then with it on. All it's doing is it's pushing some of these notes um, off the grid when they're triggered. So they don't hit exactly like machine gun style. They'll kind of stutter a little bit. You know the effect. You've heard it on countless like hip hop beats that have used machines like this. And then with it back on. So really, if you listen to the hats and to the maraca that we brought in, uh, you'll be able to definitely hear the difference. In fact, I kind of like it in this case with the shuffle turned off. All right, so that is our first drum machine. All right, so up next is the Beatbox 9, more of a 909 emulation. And with this one, I'll go ahead and just like program in one part kind of from scratch. I'll probably take like the crash sound here. Maybe we'll add a little bit of reverb to that. We'll go out from the crash into the input of the reverb output of the reverb will just run into slot number three here and um, my guess is this preset will probably be fine we'll just make it huge so that you can really hear it with some big pre delay or something like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and program in that crash so i'll select it and now i can program in what i want maybe we just want it hitting at the start So right away, you're going to be able to tell that that's occurring way too frequently. That's because the uh, pattern we have on the other drum machine is 64 in length, 64 16th notes in length, a.k.a. For like four full bars. At least I think that's right with the math, right? 16, 32, 48, 64. So I'll go ahead and actually change this pattern length up to 64. There might be a faster way to do this. I'm not really sure. And so now it's just going to occur each time it comes all the way back. Maybe I'll turn the tuning up on this, pull the level down a little, and then go into our reverb here. Wash it out. Just make it all the way. Two, three, four. There we go. I'm liking the sound of that. We'll tune it up even higher. Cool. That sounds awesome. And so for the most part, this is working exactly the same way. So if you want to program in anything else, you very easily could. 
So last but not least, we'll take a look at this final drum machine, which they call the Machinista. Don't know why they gave it that name. I'm sure there's a reason for it. But all it is is just a basic sampler, and specifically a drum sampler. And what that means is we can bring in our own audio clips or something from the library and just drop it on into here and then route that out. So I might go in here and search for something like, I don't know, cowbell. See if anything comes up. There's all sorts of options that people have put in here. Let's take a listen to this one. That's going to work for me. I'll just drag and drop it in like so. And then once it loads in, I can either run the output specifically from this cowbell if I want to go through some effects. Since it's the only thing I'm using, I'll go ahead and run it from the master so that I have access to all of these additional effects and options down here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, let's just close this back down. And maybe we want to add some kind of an effect here just to make this fun and interesting. Let's add on the detune might work nicely. It might not. You never know. This is the joy of experimenting. And we'll just take it and run it into our fourth slot here. We'll start playing back. Just run a couple guys here. put the pan position over to the left. That sounds pretty cool. We can use a filter. And now there are some modulation options that you have, but it's really like a modulation like envelope. So I wouldn't say it's like the easiest thing to kind of figure out. And for that reason, I'm just going to skip over it because let's say we wanted to pan this guy back and forth. Okay. You would think that maybe with modulation, we'd be able to accomplish that relatively easily, but we can't. So I'm going to show you a very simple way to accomplish that when we start to look at the options we have down here on our little timeline.